Visual Analytics customers are well aware of the value of in-memory analytics delivered by the laser server. Since data is stored in memory and analytics are performed on that data, it is important to ensure that laser server pages remain in memory. There are controls available to manage laser server memory, but in some cases it is not clear which controls should be used and when they should be used. Continue watching as we review available memory controls and how they are used to ensure laser servers do not overcommit memory. I'm Mark Thomas with SAS, and this is the Technical Insights and Expertise series. In order to better understand what we mean by laser server memory controls, here are the questions that we will answer. First, what are they and what do they entail? We indicate that there are controls, so that's more than one, but how many of them exist? Where are they located, so that we know where to find them to use them? And finally, how do we use them? We will have examples as we go along. Before we get to the controls, let's first review the combination of laser servers that are possible. Here we show the two major types of visual analytics environments with non-distributed laser servers. As you can see from the diagram, non-distributed laser servers can be deployed on Windows or Linux. The metadata server, the compute server, and the middle tier servers are common to many SaaS solutions. But the laser server is unique to only a small number of products, in this case, visual analytics. Although not to scale, the laser server in these two diagrams reflect that the laser server is the largest consumer of memory in a deployment. One key piece of information here is that the laser server in a non-distributed environment is really a special instance of a workspace server, and we'll touch on that momentarily. The minimum configuration for a non-distributed environment is four cores and 64 gig of RAM, or 16 gig of RAM per core. On this slide, we show the basic components of a visual analytics environment with a distributed laser server. This represents a common deployment at customer sites. The standard SaaS components exist just as they exist in the non-distributed environment. By this, we mean metadata, compute, and middle tiers. It is the laser server that is unique. Notice that there are four nodes for the laser server. The first node serves as the root node or the coordinator node. When connecting to a distributed laser server, you connect to the laser root node. The remaining nodes are data nodes or worker nodes, where data is loaded into memory and analytics are performed. The reference to HPAE on each node is to the high performance analytics environment. The laser server is instantiated using the high performance analytics environment. This diagram represents a minimal configuration for visual analytics deployment with distributed laser. That is, four machines with four cores each and 64 gig of RAM each. This laser configuration is only available on Linux. However, the metadata compute in middle tiers could be placed on Windows. So what are these laser memory controls? First, laser memory controls are not an add-on or installable feature or capability. They're really tuning knobs, if you will, uh, or standard controls that are built into either the product itself or into the operating system. They are available at several levels, such as the operating system, a laser process, or native to the application. They allow the person configuring the deployment to control memory usage for laser servers. Some of the controls are unique to distributed and others are unique to non-distributed deployments. Of the available controls, only one of the controls is applicable to all deployments. And we'll see that there is one control that we should be avoided altogether. We'll now walk through each of the controls. The first control is a set of variables that can be found within the resource settings file of a distributed only deployment. This file is located in the root directory of the TK grid installation. The second control was related to the first. The same resource settings file can also be used to integrate memory controls with YARN. This too is only available for distributed deployments. The third control you may be familiar with MemSize is a SAS system option used when starting SAS sessions. In terms of controlling laser servers, it is only available on non-distributed deployments. The fourth control is the table mem parameter. This parameter is associated with PROC laser when used to start a distributed laser server. 
we'll also see that it is available to other procedures. The fifth control is the tables limit. This limit can be specified within the Visual Analytics Administrator interface or in metadata using the SAS Management Console. This control is available to all laser servers. The sixth control is a Linux operating system limit called ULimit. This parameter can be configured in etsysecuritylimits.conf and it only applies on Linux systems. The seventh and final control is the memory limits enforced by cgroups. Although it is only available on Linux, it is not recommended for use, and we'll see why later. This concludes the list of controls. You can see that they are found at various locations and are available to numerous unique configurations. Let's look a little more closely at each control, beginning with resource.settings. Resource settings is really a script that contains a variety of environment variables used to manage laser servers. The two controls used to limit memory usage are TKMPI mem size and TKMPI ULimit. These controls are really Linux environment variables. By default, all statements in resource settings are commented out, and thus these two controls default to unlimited. TKMPI mem size is associated with the amount of memory each laser process can consume in a distributed deployment. In order to limit properly, take the total amount of memory in megabytes that the laser server is expected to consume and divide by the number of data nodes. Please note that SAS HDAT files loaded from HDFS should not be included in this amount. TKMPI ULimit is the amount of virtual memory to be consumed by each laser process. This control differs from TKMPI mem size in that this value would include SAS HDAT datasets loaded from HDFS. The limits for both of these controls can be tailored for individual accounts, groups, or applications by mod modifying the resource.settings file. Sample code is supplied to get things kicked off. The resource settings file is available on each of the distributed laser nodes. Once the file is updated, it must be copied to all of the laser nodes. The example shown at the bottom of the slide is a snapshot of the two controls as defined in the default resource settings file. In order to set these limits, you would simply remove the comments for each variable and set to a value that meets the site's requirements. Setting TKMPI mem size and TKMPI ULimit in the resource settings file is the preferred method of controlling memory on a distributed laser deployment. The same file is used to integrate YARM with the laser server. And the same parameter, TKMPI mem size, is also used when using YARM to manage resources. The TKMPI mem size parameter is passed to the resource manager and specifies the amount of memory for YARM to reserve. Like the configuration for non-YARN environments, the resource settings file must be copied to all nodes of the laser server. This screenshot shows where the TKMPI mem size parameter is passed to the resource manager. The mem size option has been used for years to control the amount of virtual memory allocated to a SAS session. However, a laser server is really just a special instance of a SAS workspace server in a non-distributed laser deployment. And as a result, it can also be used to control memory for a non-distributed laser server. Since the mem size option specifies the amount of memory for the process, it must be set at session start time and cannot be adjusted afterward. When visual analytics is deployed, this parameter is set to zero. This is also the same as setting it to max. The default setting is specified in the Workspace Server user mod script. When set to zero or max, the actual value used for mem size is approximately 80% of the system memory. The screenshot at the bottom of this slide shows the default configuration of Workspace User Mod script after deployment. Keep in mind that a change to the control setting here will apply to all laser servers within that application server context. Mem size is the preferred method of controlling memory on non-distributed laser deployments. The table mem parameter is a memory usage limit that when exceeded 
table loads will fail. The limit represents the percentage of real memory used across all nodes of a laser cluster, including the root node. Since we are talking multiple nodes, then this control only applies to distributed laser deployments. If PROC laser is used to start a laser server and the table mem parameter is not supplied, it will default to 75%. So in this case, once memory usage exceeds 75% for all nodes in the cluster, table loads will be halted. If the Visual Analytics Administrator interface is used to start a laser server, the default value of 80% will be used unless changed before starting the laser server. A key point here is that the SAS HDAT tables loaded from HDFS will not increase real memory utilization and thus won't be included in this limit. Finally, this limit can be dynamically adjusted using the PROC VA SMP and PROC IM STAT procedures. This slide simply shows screenshots of where this control is set in metadata using the advanced options of the laser server's property in the SAS Management Console. The value is then reflected in the last action log when starting a laser server. The tables limit is the only control that applies to all laser servers. It allows the administrator to control the amount of memory to be used by loaded tables. The limit is stored in metadata. It can be changed in metadata using the SAS Management Console or directly within the Visual Analytics Administrator interface under the Laser Servers tab. The metadata parameter used for this control is VA.MaxTotalMemoryForTables and can be found on the extended attributes of the Laser Servers properties. It is possible to modify this parameter on the fly. If once modified, it is immediately effective. The maximum value for this parameter will be smaller than that of the mem size, TK, MPI mem size, or U limit, depending on which of these is set. These screenshots show the location of settings. The first shot is from the laser servers tab of the Visual Analytics Administrator, and the limit was set to 3000 megabytes or 3 gigabytes. The second screenshot shows the same setting, but from the extended attributes tab of the laser server properties in the SAS management console. Notice that this setting is in bytes instead of megabytes. When this limit is exceeded, new tables will be prevented from being loaded. And once exceeded, the status column will change from running to over capacity to reveal that no more tables can be loaded. The next control is actually a Linux system level control. U-Limits control a variety of resources within Linux. The specific limit that we want to control is the virtual memory allocated to processes. A system-wide limit can be set for all processes, or the limits in the configuration file can be configured to limit by accounts or groups. On machines with a distributed laser server, this limit would include SAS HDAT memory map datasets. The default when setting up new Linux systems is unlimited. And you can determine the current setting for the existing shell by using the dash V option of the ULimit command. In this example, we see that the limit is set to unlimited. Note that depending on the configuration file setup, this limit may be different for different accounts or groups. The final control where memory can be limited is using C group limits. C groups should never be used to limit memory for laser servers. If enabled and a limit is exceeded, there are two possible outcomes depending on the C group configuration. Either the process is killed by the out of memory, con memory control, or the process is placed into a wait state until more memory becomes available. Both of these outcomes are disastrous for an in-memory server. Therefore, it should never be used for laser server memory management. The configuration of cgroups is located in etccgconfig.conf and etccjrules.com. If you are planning a new deployment, it is worth checking to ensure that cgroup memory management is not enabled. This concludes our roundup of laser memory controls. As you can see, there are a variety of controls available to effectively manage laser memory. Keep in mind that multiple controls may come into play. 
For example, on a distributed laser server, it is possible to have a virtual memory limit via U limits, a laser process limit using TKMPI mem size, and a table limit set by the Visual Analytics Administrator. So it can be very useful to understand each control and how they relate to each other. For more information on the software reference in this video, please see the associated links. Thank you and check back with your global enablement and learning team for more tips and tricks.